Okay, I'm here with Ben. Hey, Ben. Hey, guys. And uh, Ben's going to be hanging out with us for about six weeks. And we've got lots of cool projects planned with him. We're going to finally build the ramp pump. Uh, the greenhouse is progressing, so we're going to build an annualized geosolar system. Today, we're going to build a spring box, maybe two, uh, or at least do some experimentation, which is why I wanted to make a video. It's kind of a challenging place to build a spring box. And so before I go and build or bring a whole bunch of gear down there, we're gonna run a couple experiments and see what happens. So uh, side by side's loaded up. We've got our chainsaw, we've got a post pounder, we've got a steel post for the experiment. And we're just gonna go and kind of tool around at the spring and uh, see what we find. Okay, let's get down there. Hey guys, we just got here, and so the springs are just down there. So we're gonna walk through the bush right now, and we're gonna bring a few tools with us, and then we're gonna get down there, and we'll talk a little bit about the problem that we've got and how we're gonna try and solve it. So let's get into the bush. Okay, so you can throw that guy on. Thank you. And I'll take this. And the post pounder. Oh, did you grab a post? Oh, sorry, I thought you had. Oh, no worries, all good. Okay, we forgot the post, so we're gonna go get the post. <laughs> now let's unload it. And uh, you bring that. We'll unload the chainsaw. Well, I'll go grab the post. You can bring all this gear okay. down. Make yeah. sure that. Okay, I'm gonna go grab those posts, and then we're going to get on this. This is what came with the property. It's amazing. Like this is coming out at a pretty good rate. The issue that I've got is that we're on a pretty steep slope and it looks like there's a bunch of rock in here. And so what I need to do is build a spring box around this. And so I wanna see if I can even get a post into this material because I've gotta basically build a retaining wall for my plastic spring box to basically wrap around this area right here. So we're gonna try that. There's another spring right over there coming out of the hill. And so after I've kind of confirmed that my post will go in, then I'm gonna get my transit out and we're actually gonna shoot some elevations because there's a third spring right behind there. And so we might actually be able to amalgamate all of the three sp springs together, which would just be unbelievable because like when you start looking at the flow rate down here, we've got actually quite a bit of water coming and uh, because a ram pump wastes, or it doesn't actually waste it, but it uses only about a tenth of what it actually goes, goes through the ram pump actually makes it to the top of the hill. And so if I have 10 liters per minute, for example, coming through, or 10 liters per second coming through the system, that means only one liter per second typically will end up at the top. So what we want to do is try and maximize the water coming through the system. So let's say if I could get it to 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 100 liters per second, if I got it to 100 liters per second, which I don't think we have here, maybe, maybe it's 50 between the three springs, then I'll get one tenth of that. So that'd be like five liters per second or just over a gallon per second. I don't know what we got going on here. And so until we actually build these dams, uh, we won't know exactly what our flow rate is. So let's just start with this test. Uh, I'll, I'll put a couple of posts in a couple of locations and see how well the ground receives it. If the posts don't work, very well. I've got another plan which might work. And so it just happens that there's this big log right here. And so I could actually enhance how the pipe is coming out of the ground. And then I've contemplated hanging a barrel from the log and then plumbing that water into a barrel. And then the barrel kind of becomes the device that kind of amalgamates all the water and then connecting my big pipe which is actually gonna go all the way down the valley. I've got a big pipeline coming in tomorrow. It's gonna to be about 1,200 feet. And so we're gonna plumb this water 1,200 feet down the valley, 
which will give me my elevation drop. And so that's the other big important thing for a ram pump is you need both flow rate and elevation. So if I can get, let's say 10 liters per second with a 20 foot drop, I'm gonna have lots of energy built up in that water, which is what's actually gonna power the water hammer. And it's the water hammer phenomenon that actually runs a, a ram pump. So this is the beginning stage of the whole ram uh, pump project. We're gonna probably get this thing built right before winter, uh, and then we're gonna to have to shut it down again, but that means it'll be ready to get started back up in the spring next year. Okay, let's try this out. Really hoping that these posts are gonna get through that material. We're gonna find out pretty quickly here. And if not, we're gonna to have to come up with another strategy. So the goal is to get the dam as high as possible, again, because we want, like just between here and where the river is, or the creek, we've at least got 15 feet. So I know that my 1200 foot pipe, I'm probably gonna have, I don't know, maybe as much as 30 feet drop, which is amazing for a ram pump. But just as I suspected, we've got some kind of shaley clay stuff here, which is not really good. So we're gonna try a couple different things. Yeah, so that's pretty hard stuff. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get through that. So another way to do this is to, if we can get it on the sides, which we might be able to do, then we can at least tie the barrel to this, these holes here. Let's see here. We're gonna give this a go and see if we can get this in. There's a bit of a ledge here, which I think I can get a chisel on and flatten it out, which is gonna work perfect for the barrel. Now I just gotta figure out how to anchor it. And so if I can get a few of these posts in, then I can use two by fours and other blocking to kind of hold it into the bank. I think that's what we're gonna to have to do. As you can see, it's pretty, Slick. That's pretty strong. And if we have to, we can actually put another one up there and then tie a rope to it. So I think we can build off of that. Let's see if we can get a couple more in here. And then we're gonna have to get some blocking to hold it all together. This is gonna be the tough one right here. <laughs> Maybe I get in there. Good, not bad. Good, okay. I think we've got enough there to, to build our spring box now. And like I said, if we need to, I can put another one up there and then we can tie 
tension lines back up to the top because there's going to be a lot of back pressure on this thing. Um, and already I can see this. I may want to put another one. We'll see what kind of material this is. I might be able to chop some of this rock away and then I could put a beam across here potentially as well. I might try and put one more in here. We'll see. I think when we get the bucket in here, we're going to see there's going to be a lot of pressure right here to push this out. And we got to make sure this stays. So one way to do it would be to put some high tensile wire around the bottom to hold it or rope or something. It's a bit Mickey Mouse, but you're dealing with the landscape. And so you kind of have to work with what it lets you do. We might also be able to scratch a lip in here to lock it in, but uh, until we get a pickaxe, I won't know. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a pickaxe. I'm gonna get my transit level. I wanna measure the elevation of the outlet of the water here relative to the two other ones. And I think while we're back getting those parts, I think we're also going to cut open the first barrel. So we'll keep the video rolling at that point and show you how to build a plastic dam so that we can get that ready. And then when we come back, we'll have all the parts ready and we can actually start to assemble it, I think. Okay, let's go back to the shop. Okay, so we're just heading back to the shop. I don't know if you can hear what I'm saying. <laughs> Probably not. Just can't believe how well that worked. I think we're gonna have really great um, opportunity. So the reason we're building this pump is that those tanks over there uh, are the top part of our property. So the ram pump is going to get enough energy to pump to those tanks. And then from there, there's a pipeline that goes around our entire property. And so then we can have gravity fed water all the way down. So that's gonna give us water for our gardens, for our greenhouse, all the livestock. One of the reasons that livestock are destructive on the environment is because the people managing them um, don't put the effort in. And I know that sounds like a really cocky thing to say, like who is this former urbanite talking about how people manage their livestock. But I mean, I'm out here now in the country and people don't feel buy properties like this one, which has two creeks so that they don't have to develop water, which means that they're relying on the cows to go down to the creek to get their water, which means they're shitting and pissing into those creeks, um, which is degrading river water, creek water downstream. So by doing this, we keep the cows out of the creeks because we fence them out and we bring water to them. And by using an energy free pump, AKA the water hammer, by getting smart with gravity, we don't have to run power down there. If the ram pump doesn't work, I've never done a ram pump before, it should work. Everything I've looked at uh, indicates that this is gonna work awesome. But if it doesn't, uh, I'll put a solar pump at the bottom and we'll make sure there's an accumulator down there and then the solar pump will pump up to those tanks um, during the day when there's sun. So let's go get that uh, plastic dam done and we'll get back over there and see how it works. Okay, so we're gonna use these barrels. They're food grade barrels as our, our water collection dam. And uh, I'm gonna cut it and then we're gonna put two bulkhead fittings in here, an overflow and the primary uh, collection. This is gonna allow us basically to have a threaded fitting on the outside of the barrel like this. Kind of dirty right now, but we've got a threaded fitting and then we can either go straight into the pipe, but what I've actually done is I've got some more PVC, which we're gonna be able to run like a bit of an aqueduct between the different uh, springs and then unify the flow. So I'm probably, it's gonna take a couple trips back and forth. We might actually load up the generator in here and then bring some of these tools so we don't have to keep coming back to the shop, I think. Uh, ideally, I'd have some more battery powered tools, but I don't have them all yet. Uh, anyway, so we're gonna cut the top off. 
Um, and then once the top is cut off, then on the bottom, we're gonna cut straight through the middle of the barrel. And then we're gonna cut some scallops in here so that the whole barrel can actually open up. And then that's what's gonna form the uh, membrane or the layer for the dam that's going to collect all the water. So let's cut the lid off first. Missing the barrel. I gotta increase my depth here a bit. No, oh, it's all the way. Okay, now we're gonna cut it down the middle and open it up. It's a nice line right here, so we'll just follow that line. Through. So now we gotta cut scallops in here. And I'm just wondering now if I should uh, just cut this out and then cut scallops. I think that might be a bit easier. So this is going to sit on the lip that we cut into the side of the hill and hopefully help to seal it a little bit. Normally I would do that with um, a jigsaw, but I don't have one right now. It's in Calgary, so we'll just do this. It's no one's gonna see this. Now for this thing to actually open up, now I gotta cut um, bending points in here. Okay, so this should open right up. There we go. That's our spring box right there. That's gonna wrap around the hill, if we're lucky. <laughs> now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pack up a bunch of tools, generator, and then see if we can't see some of this work down there so that we can get the measurement. Ben is standing over there with a the transit staff. You can't see me, because I'm off camera running the transit unit and I'm going to see if I can get an elevation for my transit which I don't think I'm going to be able to do without yeah okay so I have to reposition Ben is so high that I have to move my transit further up elevation here so that I can get the right elevation what we're doing right now is we're gonna look, cause I've got three or four springs coming out of the side of the hill. And I wanna make sure that I set up my first spring box so that I can take advantage of all the other springs. And so basically I wanna know, you know what my limiting factor is. And I think I know what it is. I think Ben's situation there is going to, he's going to be the highest in the landscape. Okay, I can just see it now. So it, the staff on the bottom there is covered by some branches. Just move those branches. Okay, perfect. Okay, bring this, bring the staff out a little bit towards you. Okay, so that elevation from where I am, the relative elevation, is it, is it on the ground? 
Put it on the ground. Yeah. Okay. Point two. So 23 centimeters. Now I want you to come over to this here and I'd like you to focus the camera on the gray tube. Okay, so this one's a little bit actually higher in the landscape, ironically. Doesn't look like it, but it is. So that's good. And then let's come over here and just move the camera again. So the gray tube, which Ben was just at, is a little bit higher in the landscape than the first place that he measured, which means that's gonna have the highest head pressure, which is what we want. And now we've got another spring coming out of the bottom of this aspen tree which is actually pretty good and it's flowed most of the year. I don't know if I'm going to capture it for the purpose of this project, but it'd be just interesting to know what the elevation of that is relative to the other two. So Ben's going to come and stick his transit staff there into the hole and then I'm going to take an elevation. Okay, so this one is 1.15. So the first one was 0.23. So this is one meter lower than that one and that one. So we can catch it, but the highest yield or the most head pressure that we're gonna be able to get is from that first one that we have got the, the uh, stakes in. So now let's try fitting the barrel around there and see how it fits. And then we'll adjust the ledge so that um, it's nice and uh, level for it. Okay, so I'm going to try and make this ledge a little bit more level. See what I can do. So it's easier for us to seal our barrel against this. So let's take the pickaxe. It's pretty soft rock to be honest. Quite surprising actually. Look, it's even coming out. Oh no, maybe it's just draining down from there. It's more like a uncured sandstone or something. Uh oh, I don't want to do that. Okay. So we're trying to build a solid ledge here for the barrel to sit on and then we can put our bentonite in behind and then hopefully that seals to the to the edge of the cliff. Okay. Now we're going to bring in the barrel. I'm going to put one more channel in over here. Okay, let's see how this works. Now we haven't put any of the holes into the barrel yet. We'll do that next. Put the shovel down if you want. And I think we'll take this guy out just for a second. And look at the flow on that beast. Right. So I think we're actually gonna have to cut this bad boy down. Either that or we can, well, we can go a bit further maybe. Yeah, maybe. But it might be easier just to cut this and uh, or we could try and go into the hill a bit more, maybe on this side, that would be really good. Let's try that. So the barrel's actually a little bit, the radius is a bit too big. 
or the, sorry, the circumference. So I'm gonna try and cut a little bit more into the side of the cliff here so that maybe we can get it in a bit further. Otherwise, we're gonna have to cut the barrel down a bit. You know, I think it's gonna be just easier and I risk actually doing damage here. So I think I'm gonna, let's get that barrel back here again and we'll just get a sense of where I should cut it. And I'm gonna go back up and start up the generator and then we'll cut it. So we could try cutting it right about here, I'd say. We could probably do one less and then just to be safe. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now try and pull your end out. I think you're going to want to put yours behind your pipe there. So take it out, lift it up. Put it, look, no, up, yeah, go yeah. on the inside. The goal here is to get this bottom flushed with uh, the pot down, ideally. Yeah, ideally. Okay, come on to this side now, just hold on to this. Without, don't impale yourself on that, whatever you do. Okay, I think I have to cut these bottom tabs off. Are you going to chainsaw it or bring it back up to the generator? That's a good idea. Let's chainsaw it. Yep, it's way less work. in there. Here. Yeah, I don't know if I can bend it around this close. That's pretty good. Still too big though. So we'll cut off one more little segment there. I guess. Yeah, I think so. Let's try, keep yours there. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Okay, we'll try one more thing, bring yours out. <laughs> Okay, so the barrel shape of the barrel was causing a lot of problems um, and we couldn't get it to quite fit in the space that we created. So we just took a torch and we melted the end into a different shape and it works really well. So we're gonna do that to this end here and uh, that way it'll kind of hug the stone and then also um, we'll have something to basically put some bentonite behind on the side of the cliff there uh, when we get it going there. So let's light up the torch. And uh, we burnt the plastic a bit too much on the last one. So we'll try and do it a bit less here and we'll see how it goes. All right, so we've got this other radius now, which is in the opposite direction. 
Seems to work really well with that heat. Okay, so there's the, the cross section of it there. I don't know if you can see it easier this way, like that. So that's gonna work really well on the side of the hill. We're gonna go fit it and then maybe we can start putting some pipes in. All right. All right, so it actually fits pretty good. I think what we're gonna do, no, we'll keep that closer to the, to the, the thing there. Um, this over and then uh, you pull yours back a bit. We could actually just cut away the clip a bit more there and then we're going to be perfect. Yeah. So let's we'll pull that down. And then we'll be just about perfect. <sighs> like it wanted to come out for that barrel. <laughs> Almost perfect. Okay, let's try it again. Is that gonna rotate a bit more? Perfect. Beauty. Okay. So now we just need that to be, so we'll cut down that side a little bit more and put that on my side a little bit more. Stick that out. Whoa. Okay, let's try it again. Put a piece of wood onto this guy, and put a piece of wood onto yours, and then we can screw into it. And then we're gonna have to put some landscape fabric down there and gravel, or landscape fabric then clay then gravel. Um, okay, so let's just leave that like that now, and we'll put let's put in our. So we can put in our bulkhead fitting right here, just below this line. And our overflow is gonna sit up here. So we'll do that up at the up at the SUV or the sorry the the side by side. And then this is gonna be perfect because the pipe coming out here, we can fasten to this so it's not creating any stress on the pipe. Um, and then we can even put a piece of wood back into here just to support this a bit. And I also got some straps that we can run from post to post to give us some, probably the straps are what's gonna hold it actually. So let's go put these two bulkhead fittings in. Then we'll bring a piece of wood down and some screws and drills and we can use a chainsaw to cut it if we need to. It'll look like a hot dam. Okay, so we're gonna Put a bulkhead fitting in now, and if I can find it. There we go. We're gonna put in two, two different bulkhead fittings. We're gonna put our drive pipe, which is gonna be an uh, inch and a half. So this guy, right there, perfect. And it's got a T on the end. So we're actually gonna put two stubbed out pipes and then drill holes in it. I'm missing the cap, so I'm gonna have to go to the hardware store for that, but that's gonna be our accumulator. And then we're gonna put a smaller one inch um, overflow, which is gonna be this guy. And so this guy will fit through here. There'll be two of those, one on each side. Again, I'm missing a piece. So one there and one on the inside. 
And so if in large rain events, the springs actually tend to flow at different rates throughout the year. So what we've observed this year, this uh, will allow the system to have some relief without it breaking the seal that we're eventually gonna put over the top so that we don't get overland flow coming into the actual system itself. So in order to put these in, we need a pretty hefty drill. I'm gonna try my battery powered one, but I don't think it's gonna cut it. Um, almost guaranteed, but we'll give it a go. And we need a hole saw. I love bulkhead fittings. I don't know why, it's probably because I'm a mechanical engineer. They're just such cool little devices. So we kind of dry fit it. We're gonna put one right there through the wall. So what we do, we find our appropriate hole saw. So we're gonna put it on high torque and low speed right in the middle here. You know, I was just thinking how much these drills have changed the world. <laughs> like I did bring a generator with me, but if I had had a battery powered skill saw, I wouldn't have had to bring the generator. That, that's amazing to me that that worked. Uh, it's a lot of torque for a little tiny battery power drill. Okay, so we're gonna put the rubber on. Typically, I'll put this on the inside of the, the barrel, but because of its round surface, I'm gonna put it on the outside and backwards to how I typically do it. And actually, still gonna put it on the back, outside, but what I'm gonna do is, yeah, Let's see. We don't have a lot of space behind the cliff there. So I think I'm gonna put the small side here, and actually I'm look, looking at that now and there's enough, the radius is small enough that I think I'm just gonna put the seal on the inside. I'm actually gonna do it how I'm supposed to. I was thinking I had to put it on the outside, but it's gonna work well, I think. Now, sometimes these still won't seal. And so if that's the case, when we do the final install on this, we might actually put a bead of caulking behind it. But I think it'll actually seal. Close. Yeah, you've been up. Okay, so this goes in like that, and then we're gonna cut two chunks of pipe, not very long. So what we're gonna do, just, we'll get it as far as we can today. Uh, and yeah. Okay, let that dry. And we're gonna put the other bulkhead fitting in. So we're gonna put this one kind of lower than where the spring comes out of the wall, which is about right here. But then on the inside, or even on the outside, we can put a standpipe, which will control the final elevation for it. Now we may have to insulate this, uh, the winter comes, I don't know. I have no idea how this is gonna respond in the winter, so it's a great time to be testing this. We're not gonna have the ram pump running in the winter time, but, but we will not remove the, the spring box through the winter. And what was really interesting, it got really cold last year, but the spring stayed like pretty thawed because you could think about it, it's like the water's coming out at four degrees Celsius. It's actually pretty warm. You know, this is gonna work like a hot dam. It's got a little bevel in there that will fit right into the hole I just drilled. Okay, and so then this guy, again, we'll put a socket coupling on the outside here. So that's gonna tie into our one inch pipe on the outside. 
with any luck, we're gonna actually be able to seal this in today because I got the bend tonight. Looks like there's actually a rain event coming here. Hopefully, let's see if we can do this before. I probably shouldn't seal it today because I'll need to get the landscape fabric first. So we'll probably tie up all our tools. We'll fit this in, make sure it fits, and then maybe I'll go to the co-op tonight and pick up the parts that I need. Okay, is that nice and tight? Yep, perfect. Okay, that works like a hot dam. So uh, let's cut two pieces of pipe for the accumulator. So you can screw that one in there. Let's, uh, why don't you rotate the barrel around so folks can see. Yep. All right, so we just got a thunderstorm a warning, so we're gonna wrap up here and we'll be back tomorrow. Okay, see you guys in the morning. I'm back at the spring and we're going to finish plumbing this guy in and then we're going to try and concrete it or bentonite it into the side of the hill. But before we can do that, I've got to put a few more pipes inside of it so that we have the right collection system inside that will accumulate the water, which is what's going to drive the ramp pump. And today I had help from some incredible friends. We ran 1200 feet of this along the side of a really steep cliff. It was super hard. Uh, I'm super grateful for all their help. Couldn't have done it myself without their help. Uh, so I'm just so thrilled that we got that in. And so this pipe here is going to basically take the collected water from the springs and it's going to take it down to the ram pump on the other side of the pipe. So about 1200 feet that way. And then from there, the ram pump is going to accumulate the water with water hammer. It's going to end up getting pumped up to the tanks at the top of the property, which then gives us gravity fed water throughout the entire property. So inside of the vessel, we're going to create two 45s that come off of the, uh, the T there. And this is going to hug the, the cliff over there. We're going to drill holes in these pipes and that's going to act as the accumulator. I couldn't find PVC today at the hardware store. So I had to use ABS. So we're going to use a transitional glue to glue that together. That's probably a bit long, but we'll see. Let's we we cut it down. The blade's super dull. <laughs> Not normally this hard to cut BBC pipe. Okay. So, we've got our 245s. We'll, I'll change the angle here so you can see what I'm doing. I don't think I found end caps, so we're going to build our own end caps out of um, landscape fabric. I'm just going to wrap it around here and get a hose clamp, which I forgot. So I'll have to go back and get those. Do that after dinner. And then the inside, it's really important for these springs that we have an overflow so that if there's too much water that it's got somewhere to go. Currently I just have this little socket joint here, but I uh, was trying to find enough parts today to do this and they didn't have PVC, like I said, at the hardware store. So I had to kind of improvise. So I'll show you what I've got going on here. So decided to use steel. And so the, the inside is basically gonna have, sorry, it's gonna have a steel nipple on the inside. Again, I'll change the camera angle here in a second so you can see what I'm doing. So that's gonna set the height on the inside. And we might have to put an elbow on there so that we want uh, the water level to go a bit higher before it overflows. And I think I'll, I'll get some Teflon tape on here 
uh, later. And then a lot of guys, when they're building these springs, what they do is they put this vertical pipe on. And a lot of guys, what they'll do is they'll put a cap on here and then sometimes they'll throw chlorine in here. I don't really want to do that. If I do have to shock the, uh, the spring, I'll use like a 27% hydrogen peroxide um, instead of a chlorine. I don't really like chlorine. So I'll probably come down and get some Teflon tape on here just to seal it properly. And then I'm just remembering I got another T on the inside just to increase the size of the accumulator in here so that there's double the area or the pipe diameter to accumulate water. Okay, so inside of there we've got our overflow coming in. You could easily have used PVC. It probably would have been a bit cheaper, to be honest, for the overflow. That's this guy right here I'm just working on. And then we've got the accumulator not threading in. There we go. Got the accumulator down below. And these pipes are going to fit in like this. Like so. And so they're going to hug right around. And I could actually make those a little bit smaller, I think. Um, they're going to hug around the barrel on the outside and we're going to drill holes in here so that the water can permeate in. So I'm going to do that next. We get another stub of pipe here. So these plugs will go on the outside of the pipe. Once I, I'll shorten these down, I'll make them half as big. And these little plugs are going to just sit on the end so that gravel doesn't go down the pipe. We'll just glue those on. So let's get these guys ready to go. These might actually work quite well, the, the size. I might just need small nipples on the other side here. So I'm just gonna cut some smaller nipples. The trick with straight cuts with these guys, these uh, hacksaws is having enough tension on the saw, which I don't think I've got. So this seems like a crazy amount of work just to get water. But what's nuts to me is that I've got two creeks on my property and they flow year round. And this property is super desirable for cattle ranchers because they can put their cows on here, do a perimeter fence, and then let their cows just kind of run through the creek. And so they don't have to spend a bunch of money to develop water. But in doing that, the cows poop and crap in the, in, the, in the creek. And we're at the top, we're at the headwaters right now of the Battle River. And so all of that manure ends up in the lakes and streams, like Battle Lake is downstream of us. And that's why that lake, one of the reasons that lake is eutrophic, meaning that there's a lack of oxygen, is that all this manure and fertilizer and whatever else gets into these creeks ends up in the creek. And it gives farming a bad name. And I get it, I know why they do it, because ultimately people want their food for free so the way that farmers give it to them for free or for really cheap is that they cut corners. That's what the market has demanded. It's cheap food. And so food has to become more expensive, not less expensive, so that we're not actually sawing the branch that we're, si we're sitting on in the tree. We're literally sitting on a branch hundreds of feet in the air and we're sawing the branch off and we're going to fall. And it's going to hurt <laughs> if we don't 
fix the way that we do agriculture and grow food. All right, so if you come in here now, hopefully there's enough light to see. So we're gonna have these two accumulators right here. We're gonna drill holes in all of here, then we're gonna glue it all together. And then that's what's going to accumulate the water behind this dam and release it. So then we're gonna put that up there and inventionate it. It's pretty simple. We're just going to drill holes in here. That's pretty good. We could even put a couple up into here too. Can't hurt. We don't want this to be our flow restriction. These pipes are gonna basically be surrounded by gravel. Okay, that's good. We'll do the other one. Okay, now we're gonna glue this all together. Okay, because we couldn't get PVC fittings, we're gonna have to use a transitional glue. So, Put that in there. Okay, that's gonna go into the barrel there. Normally I would cut these joints with a, a miter saw just to make them nice and square. I'm a bit <laughs> OCD with that, but whatever, we're in the field now, so we gotta do with Got to use what we got. Okay, so there's our cap. Okay, and then before I glue these onto the T inside, I am going to stick them into the barrel. And we're gonna go take it up there and just do a dry fit, in case I gotta cut these down or anything like that. So we'll stick them into the barrel now and see if it works well on the side of the hill. So that's what the inside looks like. We may end up putting elbows on here if we want to increase the height of the water before it overflows, but I think it'll be okay. That's the accumulator. Lots of holes there so we can get lots of water through. We've got our plugs here on the end. And then our drive line is going to get put into there. So we'll figure that out here shortly. Now we're going to walk up over here with this guy stick it onto the side of the hill. Okay, so now we're gonna try and get this to marry up to the side of the hill here. Okay, move that rear behind there. Yeah, this is the part. Can it bend out a bit more? No? It's pretty snug in this uh, corner here. Okay, so we're pretty close. It's still obviously coming underneath the barrel right now. And our accumulator looks really good. I'm gonna see if Ben can uh, just hold on to that. Or actually, I'll hold on to it, Ben, if you wanna grab the camera. Yep. And then people can see what I'm talking about here. So you can see why we have the 45 in there. And so the accumulator is gonna hug the, the side of the cliff here, um, which gives us lots of holes to accumulate water and so now on the side here we've got these T posts I'm gonna put some timber in here which um, is gonna provide some pressure into the wall so that this is as tight as we can make it on both sides so we're gonna screw timber in here I'm gonna measure this out and then what we're gonna do when this thing is fixed to these T posts I'm gonna put some landscape fabric down on the bottom we're going to drape it down then we're going to put some gravel on top of that landscape fabric to act as ballast not much maybe about an inch two inches and then we're going to line this with bentonite clay and the bentonite's just literally going to seal up the holes in between the gravel and then i'm going to put more landscape fabric on top of that 
after we've got a nice thick layer of bentonite on top of it. And then once we've got that layer of gravel and bentonite, we got to make sure we got bentonite up in the corners here as well so that it doesn't leak around the sides. And we're just going to literally fill this up with gravel so that um, we've got a nice area that will allow that percolation through the gravel into this accumulator. full tripod or just the demo? Um, yeah. All right, so <laughs> you still can't see in there. I might try and change the, the camera angle again. But now, uh, pass me the fabric there, Ben. We're gonna put this fabric in and we're gonna line it. So we're gonna first get our big slice of it. And this is gonna stop the gravel from coming through. We'll kind of fall in here. How can we get a better hold? So, let's see if the mic will hold us up a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, we'll try that for a bit. <laughs> okay, so the fabric now is going to go into the barrel. And we're going to line it underneath here. Pull it up the side. You might want to do a second layer. It's pretty thin stuff. I should have got thicker stuff, I think. Let's make this one a little bit longer. And then this is going to be what we put the gravel on top of. We're going to put a layer of gravel as ballast just to hold it in place. So I'm going to go get a bucket of gravel. So this here is the inside angle of the spring box. We have two layers of landscape fabric here on the bottom. And Rob is just collecting a bucket of gravel that's going to go right on top of the landscape fabric to hold it down, on top of which I think more landscape fabric is going to go. There's an angle from the top down. You can see the spring weeping out of the hillside here and the two layers of landscape fabric that we've laid down on the bottom over which gravel is going to go and then eventually the bentonite clay to seal up the gravel. Okay, while we're just moving the gorilla pod, you got to get a sense of what this thing's going to look like. It literally is containing water out the side of the hill. That bucket's got the gravel in it, which is going to be our ballast. And then we're going to put bentonite on top of that. All right, so there we are. Let's see if I can get a better angle here. Okay. Now, I'm going to hold up the, the fabric. And Ben's going to just hand place some rocks in there to ballast it out. Yeah. Yeah, you can probably lift the bucket up now and pour a few more in. Don't have to worry about hitting these uh, pipes. Uh, here. Hold on. Hold on. Don't want the plastic in there. 
looking really good. So now what we're gonna do is put some bentonite in there. So bentonite is a uh, expansive clay. Now let's try not to get it in the pipe. So come on over here on this side. Let's pour it in. Yep. Come up wrong. And so this is what well drillers use to seal wells. Okay, now onto your side there. starting to seal which is great news okay now we're going to put another layer of landscape fabric down on top of the bentonite we'll just see we'll just watch this for a few minutes Okay, so that's really good. This is collecting water now. Yep, put some on your side. We're gonna need some more on this side here. Actually, we'll put this on first. Just dump a bunch right here. Oh yeah. Yep. landscape fabric in there and what's going to happen too is that it's going to get better as a as the bentonite expands mm. so we can get some more a bit more bentonite maybe it's uh that was the rest of the bag yeah, yeah we got i got five more bags oh hell yeah and yeah because we should probably fill up the rest of the side to be higher than the overflow yep totally Nice. You got that other pipe in there too? Which one? Just that you got this one coming yeah, in there. Yeah, we'll have to cut that down a bit, but we can maybe go with a bigger pipe even in there. Rolling. Okay, this worked out way better than I expected. Uh, we still got some bentonite in the water here that'll flare up over time. We're going to put some landscape fabric over top of the bentonite. I need to get another bag. Um, this post right here is going to provide support for my pipe coming out. So we'll put a piece of wood in here so that we can strap that pipe to the wood. We've got another little spring right over here that we're gonna try and tap into as well. It's kind of a happy little accident. And I think because this is gonna get pretty heavy, I'm gonna put another post up top, which is right there. And we're gonna tie some rope back to it just so that this provides a bit more extra strength to hold it into the hill. So pretty awesome the bentonite should improve over time i know i'm late for dinner right now so we're gonna head back for some dinner and we'll come back with some additional parts and finish this off okay so we got our dam in place we're going to hook up the pipe that we installed today and put teflon tape onto our fittings we can just get it to screw in here Water is cleared up substantially. We're gonna put the pipe on first and then finish the inside so that it dries the area up a little bit. It'll be easier to work uh, on it. Okay, so that should be nice and... Eventually we're gonna put a valve on here. Um, but in the meantime, we're just gonna put this union on if I can unscrew it. And this will allow us to break it in the winter time so that this will flow freely because we're not going to use this water source in the winter. It'll just be too 
difficult. This doesn't freeze in the winter. We may end up having to put insulation on this just to, um, to stop it from turning into a big ice block. I'm gonna have to watch this really closely. And I may, may just end up doing that anyways, just out of, a, out of precaution. Okay, so now we've got this on, ready to go on here. We're gonna put our um, barb on this one and connect it into our hose. So let's come on to the other side there. All right, so we've got our, the other side of our coupling here. I think it's called a union. The union doesn't actually need Teflon tape because it's got a brass seal inside of it, but this one will. Before I worked as an engineer in the oil and gas industry, I actually worked as a refrigeration mechanic and I was the junior grunt that put all the Teflon tape on threads. I used to build huge refrigeration facilities for the oil and gas industry. And so the trick I learned with this is that once you put your thread tape on, you want to actually push the thread tape in. And actually, another little trick that I learned, sounds silly, but you always hold this in your left hand and you hold this guy in your right hand. And then when you apply it, apply it so that the tape is like, like this. It allows you to get more tension on it. So one, one finger on the thread and then you pull as tight as you can around it. You get a much better seal that way. We had to make sure of that so that we didn't die of explosions when you're dealing with propane, which is what the, they use for refrigerate, refrigerant uh, in the oil and gas industry. They don't use ammonia or freon because the oil and gas industry is really comfortable with propane and basically any liquid that turns into a gas can act as a refrigerant. Um, so, always about being careful. Luckily, no one's going to explode here. Nope. And of course, like a newbie, I'm I'm not uh, not reversed here, so it's not working. Okay. Did we bring the hose clamps down? In my pocket. Perfect. Okay, so this is going to end up going into this pipe. Now, typically with HDPE, you fuse it, so you heat it up really hot, melt it, and then you fuse it together. I don't have a fuser, and so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this pipe at the right length. We're going to bring it up there. Then we're going to stick this sucker inside and use a torch. We heat this pipe up, which gets it nice and soft, and then when we clamp the hose clamp down on it, it actually uh, will mold to the shape of the barb and that gets it sealed really nicely. So let's uh, bring this hose up a bit closer. We'll bring the gas and without hitting the camera guy, feed it through here. go through here I think. Tomorrow we'll build a pipe support for this because this pipe's going to get pretty heavy. Um, maybe even tonight after dinner, we'll see. So, we'll stick your hose clamp on there. we we'll stick your barb in there. And then what we're going to do, I've got one of these gear screwdrivers in my pocket, so it's ready to go. really important that you use propane and not uh, yellow gas, I can't remember what's it called, MPX? Map gas, yeah, it'll burn right through the plastic.
stick. And you stick this up without burning yourself. You get a really good seal. I don't know if you can get that on the camera, but you can kind of see how the plastic is deformed here. So yeah. we got a good seal on that pipe. Oh. Don't burn yourself like that. And now this is going to get heavy pretty quick as this pipe fills up. So I'm going to get a branch, I think, to support it in the interim. So it's flowing at just below probably four gallons a minute, which is awesome. Okay, this is pretty Mickey Mouse, but we'll fix this up tomorrow uh, when I get a piece of pipe, piece of um, wooden here. This will just help to support it a bit. Piece of wood there now. That's pretty perfect. Okay, this is going to take pressure off of the um, off of the uh, fitting on the the barrel here, just a little bit. It's like I said, it's really Mickey Mouse, but that will work for this evening. Yeah, let's go now to the bridge. Um, we're actually getting a bit of a leak right here. Mm. So we'll have to try and figure out how to fix that. I suspect that we can get some bentonite up in there. It's actually in one of those little cracks that we cut earlier in the project. Um, so we may be able to shove some bentonite clay up in there later. Yeah, there's the rocks. Mm. Maybe I can shove that down. Okay, let's go to the bridge now and see the water's flowing there. We can continue to optimize this a little bit more tomorrow. Shove some bentonite up in there. That's awesome. This is the first part of our ram pump that's going to basically give us energy free water for. So I went back after dinner and the pipe wasn't flowing, and it turns out that there were too many undulations in this pipe to get the, um, the water over to that bridge there. We're dealing with about 20 feet of elevation and I'm sure we ended up with uh, an airlock in the system. Uh, and so what we're gonna do now, or not now, maybe this weekend, is we're gonna take this pipe and I'm gonna set up a whole bunch of these T-posts along the way and we're gonna get an aqueduct kind of going along perpendicular to these springs and then we'll have a really nice level slope leaving the spring area. It'll also elevate it above the creek so that when we end up in flood, we're not going to uh, lose the pipe. And I was unable to film this when we put, put this pipe in because the cliff on the side of the hill is so steep. So we're gonna go back with some poly braid rope and we're going to tie the pipe to the trees along the slope of the hill and try and make sure that we have a uniform slope all the way down where the ramp pump is going to be situated and then we should get a really good flow. Now in, in exploring these springs a little bit more I've got another spring putting out at least this flow and maybe double it uh, over there. It's pretty awesome. Um, we've got water coming off the cliff right here which we're going to be able to tap into so I've got probably three more of these large and small to build. Um, I made a few mistakes in my spring box build. I uh, put this landscape fabric down and then put some rock in there for ballast and uh, it's not working great. So I need to uh, come back here and fix it. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that yet, but we'll figure it out. We always do. Definitely glad that I built it. I'm glad that I got the learnings that I did. I like the design overall. It's not complete yet. We gotta uh, fill the, the cavity up now with gravel and then more landscape fabric. Uh, on top of that gravel and then eventually we're going to build or put a piece of pond liner up into the slope and I'll probably actually peel the moss back and put the pond liner up underneath the moss 
that any overland flow is going to flow over top of the spring box and not pick, um, get picked up in the spring box itself. So yeah, this is, you know, I think this is producing about three gallons a minute right now, which is unbelievable. It's clean, crystal clear water. Uh, even if I don't end up using this for livestock, like I said, if I can't get the, the ram pump to work, uh, I have an unlimited number of options that I can uh, come back and, uh, and use this spring for. So I'm really glad that I did it. Uh, it was a great experiment and uh, I look forward to developing the rest of the springs on this side of the, the property and figuring out how to put it to productive use. It's just, uh, Mollison in his book said, if you've got fresh, clean, flowing water, you, you've already got a million bucks in the bank. Now I don't intend on selling this water, but um, that, what an asset, you know? And like, it's just so good. Such nice tasting water, just thrilled. Anyways, stay tuned. We'll uh, show how this all connects and one of the future videos will get you guys caught up on how we're gonna build that ram pump and get this water hopefully to the top of the hill.